All right, so we're back talking about section 3.3. I know this is a long section, I apologize. I always feel like I have to apologize for algebra. I think it's big fun, but I know this can be a lot, a lot of little rules, a lot of little steps, so kind of time consuming. But um, here we are still in section 3.3. We're looking at number seven from your notes. On number seven, it told us that you had a zero of one plus two i and of two, but multiplicity two, so it's there twice. So this is actually a fourth degree polynomial when it all gets multiplied together. Uh, we're to know that if one plus two i is a zero, it's conjugate, one minus two i is also a zero. Multiplicity means that is repeated two times. So x minus two, twice. Now, I'm multiplying that out, so that I've foiled already, have that here for you, and now I'm working through this multiplication. Everything just needs to be multiplied out. So, because it's always x minus whatever the zero is, where there's two parts, we'll need to distribute the minus sign and make it minus one minus two i, and same thing here. All right, so now I'm ready to multiply each of these things times each of these things. So I'm distributing the x, then I'll distribute the minus one, and then distribute the negative two i. So let's check those terms out, and um, it's so easy to make a little mistake on these, so please, um, be kind, if I do make a mistake, let me know, um, and so I can update that. It's easy to lose your, lose your spot, and I know I can make mistakes, I'm aware, so please let me know if you, ca if you catch one. So minus one x, then distributing minus one minus one is plus one, and we are multiplying. Negative one times positive makes negative two i. Now I'm gonna distribute negative two times x, negative two i times negative one, and negative 2i times positive 2i is minus 4i squared. Lots of terms. There should be nine terms there. Three terms times three terms, all multiplied out. So let's see what we've got. Check it on your calculator. Negative 4i squared becomes just a plus 4. So 4 and 1 combines to be 5. I've got that. Um, in the front, I've got x squared. I've got a positive 2ix and a negative 2ix that cancels. I've got a negative 2i and a positive 2i that cancels. And then negative 1x and negative 1x is negative 2x. Let me pull that 5 back over a little bit. All right, so I think that's it. So this times this all multiplied out nicely. Now what you'd find if you connected this with that quadratic formula, which I've got up here at the top of the board, if you were solving that quadratic in the quadratic formula, you would see it has a plus and minus. It'd have exactly these two zeros. And that, that's why there's a conjugate pair is because the quadratic formula has a plus minus when you have a square root of a negative. So anytime you have an i because of square root of negative uh, one, you're gonna see a plus and minus, that conjugate thing. So again, if you really wanna test me in this, take this quadratic equation, plug it in that quadratic formula and see that these are exactly the two solutions you get. So it should connect back together. That's what we're doing is working our way back to the polynomial that gives you these two solutions. All right, moving on though, because that's just part of it. Those are those two zeros. We also were told that two has a multiplicity of two. And so that means x minus two twice, which I've foiled together and I have this. So I still need to incorporate this answer, this times this is this, times this answer. So one more multiplication, and again, there'll be nine terms, so it's a lot of multiplying, a lot of distributing. So I'm gonna distribute x squared times these three, and there's my fourth degree I finally find. It's fourth degree polynomial. x2 times x2 makes x to the fourth. Then x2 times minus four, x, x squared times four. Carefully watch those terms. Then I'm distributing negative two x times all of these. Then I distribute the five times these three things, hoping that I don't make some little mistake along the way. You all let me know if you catch anything. Uh, then combine any like terms. So I'm gonna start with x to the fourth, the largest exponent, which drives it, makes the degree x to the fourth. Let's mark that out. Then the cubes, negative four x cubed and negative two x cubed is negative six x cubed. Then I have four x squared, eight x squared, and five x squared. Four and eight is 12, and five is 17 x squared. So one, two, got those. 
negative 8x, negative 20x, negative 28x, and finally, the constant of 20. I think that's right. I hope that's right. So there is your polynomial that we were asked to find that when we solve it would give us these zeros. Now what I like you to do on each of these, because we're kind of preparing in three, four, the goal is that we can graph polynomial functions, which I know you can use your graphing calculator to do a lot of that, but it's still good to see the patterns and see the deeper understanding of what we're doing here. So I encourage you to uh, explore. Let's do that now. Type this polynomial, y equals, type that in your calculator and let's look at it together. I'm going to type it in mine as well. Uh, my batteries are low because I'm using my phone to, um, to video. So let's see if I can get this in my calculator. You do the same. There's various zooms you can hit. There's zoom standard, which is a 10 by 10 grid. And there's zoom fit. You can zoom in and out if you need to. Uh, I'm trying to see what else happens. I know one thing that I know from what we study is that um, some rules, and the rule we're getting ready to do next is at two, that should be my only real x-intercept. It doesn't actually do what you'd call cut through the axis because it's, it's going to bounce, actually. But we still count that as an X intercept or is zero, but whenever you have a multiplicity of two and even multiplicity, the graph actually bounces. So you'll notice, and whenever I'm looking at my 10 by 10 screen, and let me see if I can zoom it in a little bit better to see. It may have another like W shape. A lot of times it does when there's imaginary solutions that so may have a W over, either over here or over here. Um, I know it has a y-intercept at 20. The last number in this form tells you that that is the y-intercept. So I know it does cross the y-axis. If you zoom out enough, you should be able to see that. Let me try zoom fit. Sometimes zoom fit will fit it in your screen. But you can play around with the zoom features and maybe tell that. I'm not able to tell it on my uh, one just right here real quick. But it may have like a W looking thing, but it may, you may have to zoom way out. Sometimes it's to a thousand and I'm just not sure, so I don't want to take up too much time to do that. But it doesn't matter to us right now. The only things that matter for what you're responsible for in our class um, would be knowing the end behavior of the graph, that the ends should both be up if it's an even degree polynomial. So this is an even degree polynomial, fourth degree, so both ends should be together, either both up or both down. If it is positive in front, it's like a positive parabola, they're both up, fourth degree is like that, they're both up when they're positive. If we put a negative, it flips it upside down. So really that's all I need to know. I don't need to know if there's another wiggle or turning point in the graph. I just need to know that I know both the ends are going to be up towards the end of the graph. The other thing I should know is any real x-intercepts. And we have that here at 2, at x equals 2. The graph crosses, or not crosses, but it counts as an intercept. It touches the graph. So that is an x-intercept or a zero of the graph. And because it is a multiplicity 2, it bounces off the graph instead of cutting through it all the way. So that's really all you need to know. And it's nice to know the y-intercept, uh, but usually that's enough, th those details to get you uh, the things we're responsible for. All right, thought we'd just look at that for a little bit and investigate it. All right, one more of these before we move on to um, the next segment of this session. Section. So the, the kind of time-consuming problems the last one of those, number eight, where we're trying to find the polynomial, work backwards to find the polynomial. So number eight, again, always pause the video um, to practice before I reveal the answer. So here we're finding a polynomial that has zeros of negative one comma and four minus two i. So we're assuming that that one's not repeated. It didn't say anything about being degree four or higher degree, so we assume it's of lowest degree. So just the negative ones there once, but we are responsible for knowing if four minus two i is a zero, then its conjugate has to also be a zero. 
Also notice it didn't say anything about the lead coefficient, no semicolon with a clue for the lead coefficient. So we don't have to worry about that either. So here we go. To find the polynomial, we change the sign of our zero. So minus one is x plus one. Four minus i, two i will be four minus, I'm sorry, x minus quantity, four minus two i. And then x minus this last quantity, four plus two i. So it's always x minus each one of the zeros. This is the pattern we've seen the whole section. So then we have to multiply all that out, and that's what we've been taking up all the time in these videos to do thus far in this lesson. Do distribute any negative signs and get that cleaned up first, and then go into all of the uh, work like we've been doing before. <coughs> I always recommend doing the imaginaries together. They play well together a lot of times, so I would do that last. So I'm gonna take these two multiplied together. So x times x, x times minus four, x times minus two i. Distribute the minus four. Then distribute the 2i, 2i times minus 4, and 2i times negative 2i. Okay, I think I got all that on there. Combine any like terms. I'm going to start with x squared. Um, negative 4i squared becomes just positive 4. And we have a 4 and a 16. So the number on the end will be 20, 4 and 16. And then some things cancel, like these two are opposite. Eight i's are opposite. We have minus four x and minus four x, which is minus eight x. So this times this multiplies to be this. And again, if we really just wanted to take the time and prove it, you could put that in the quadratic formula, which you can see at the top of the board. If you do this a, b, and c value to solve that quadratic equation, the solutions should be four minus two i, four plus two i. Those are the solutions to that quadratic. But working backwards, we found the polynomial instead, which is, we don't do that very often, right? This is the only time we've done that. We usually are looking for the solution, not looking for the polynomial. So here it is. Then we have this x plus one that we need to incorporate and multiply. So multiply it all together, distribute the x, x times that, x times that. Distribute the one. And then combine any like terms. And once again, I encourage you to graph that on your graphing calculator. Let's look at that. It should have only one real x-intercept when we graph it at negative one. All right, so take a minute. Type that in your graphing calculator, please. So it does go something like this. And I can tell the dip in it on this time whenever I use my graphing calculator. I've got my old, very old one here. Um, I like to use the one on my phone better because I can touch screen it. So I, I think that's really handy and it's free. So I like the Calculate 84 graphing calculator if you haven't heard me say that in a previous video. Uh, but anyway, it has a turning point here that you can kind of see in the regular zoom screen. Uh, we don't really have to know that, but it's kind of neat to see a full graph and account for its third degree. We got one, two, three zeros. Only one of them I should have cut right through at negative one is the only real zero or x-intercept you can see in this graph. All right, so we have, we have powered through those eight problems, um, and it should that should cover anything you'd see in your homework where you have to find the polynomial work backwards. Those are really hard to do um, with, your with your graphing calculator. It kind of confirms what you know, but it's hard to find that without just working it by hand. So there's really no short way around that that I know of. So um, hopefully that's thorough. If you have any questions, you always let me know and we can, we can work more problems. That's what I do in, in this world, so I'm glad to help. All right, I'll come back on the next video and we'll continue with the quicker talk about the rest of the section. It's not as time consuming. So I'll see you in a bit.